good idea for him to confront Pastor David Lam in his church to prove that Islam is the only true religion, but this backfired on him. Christians, they seem to think that Muslims are inventing a different religion. The Quran is bringing something completely new. But all I have to ask is, so we know that men have been saved in the past and not called upon the name of Jesus Christ. We have this. We have Moses. We have Abraham, men who existed before. So all I have to ask you is, who is really inventing the new religion? The guy who is calling upon his Lord alone and keeping the commandments as the prophets did? Or the person who is bringing in this new name and saying that's the only means of salvation? That's my question. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. You know, when you when you look inside the Bible in the book of uh, in the Hebrew text, every time, uh, most of the time when salvation is mentioned, if you look in the Hebrew, it's it's a it's a derivative or a form of Yeshua, and Jesus's name was Yeshua. So the word salvation or the salvation that was revealed was always there, even from Abraham, as Jesus said. You know, Abraham um, uh, uh, before Abraham was, I am. The Bible says that. Abraham was visited by Jesus, the king of righteousness, Melchizedek. In fact, Abraham paid a tithe to Jesus, according to Hebrews chapter 13. As well, we see that in the book of Genesis. We see Jesus Christ right in the book of Genesis, walking in the cool of the day. And if you look in the Greek, it's the word of the Lord was walking the cool of the day. So Jesus, in, in theophany, appeared many times, even to the prophets, even to Moses. Jesus said Moses spoke of Jesus Christ. So the, we believe that the prophets had a revelation of the coming Messiah. That's why they prophesied over and over about this coming Messiah. And that's why Jesus is the only person called the Messiah mentioned in the Quran. He's uniquely mentioned as that because he was foretold he was to come by who? The prophets. Prophet Moses, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah. You can go down the list. All of them knew that this Jesus Christ was going to be the bridge between God and man and he was the salvation to come and his name is actually recorded in the Hebrew over and over and over so um, yeah when people have a new traditions or come along with a tradition saying it fits within the tradition of scripture I mean everybody's entitled to believe what they believe it just is it true and that's where the debate comes I mean Muslims and Christians have been debating for 1400 years about this right and the onus of proof and really is kind of in in the ball court of the Muslims to to come and present uh, a kind of a confirmation to their text because we have confirmations to our text we have 66 books within our Bible most Bibles I mean there's a lot of other Bibles that have maybe more books but each of them confirm that Jesus Christ was the prophet to come was the Messiah to come was the one who died on the cross for us you know so we have that confirmation and it's from different sources even the Jews that don't believe in Jesus we can take their Tanakh their Torah their, their Zabur their text and when we put it alongside our Bible we see it still speaks of a, sac a necessity of a sacrifice to reach God. It speaks of the same prophecies that we have in our Bible, and that's why we take those texts and put it with our Bible. We don't we don't make any difference between the two. So for us, that's proof that the testimony we have about Jesus is actually legitimate. When you have something that comes up and says, you know, we are the legitimate text, and we confirm the previous ones, and there is no text to back it up i mean now it's arguing from silence right and so you know everybody is entitled to pick something from the bible and say well they believed in one god i don't believe anything else it says but they said one god and i believe in one god therefore we believe the same thing i mean it's great that you believe in one god but there's more to the story so may i add one more point to that sure so the main thing i want to say is so i know there are more obscure mysterious passages throughout the bible which people say is kind of a mentioning of jesus so i know some people i don't know if you believe that but the angel of the lord and things like that sure. these are secret appearances of jesus and all i have to ask is does that not seem strange to you god has a son a son that has existed from the beginning who is god in the flesh and god would not explicitly mention it in the old testament by the way here is my son he would only tease us a few times tease us about this son while also telling us he's one commanding us to worship him alone and then all of a sudden kind of switching the nature and saying we have to worship through the son to get to him does that not seem like a deceptive god who is throwing us off regarding our doctrine no actually you know right from the beginning we see that god did reveal that he his nature is complex 
right from the creation. He says, let us make man in our image, right from almost the first chapter of the Bible. So it's, it's not some obscure thing. In fact, when you look at the Jewish traditions in the Talmud about the coming of the Messiah or, you know, any any prophetic text, it's very clear that there was somebody or something that was extended from God that is acting on behalf of God that is God or, or reveals God. In fact, even as a Muslim or any religious person, you need something that manifests in the tangible in order for you to reach the intangible. There's no way even yourself can reach an unseen, unknowable God unless there's something manifested or revealed about that God. And to be honest, if you're honest with yourself, the only way you can worship an unseen, unknowable God is through the revelation of that unseen and unknowable God. Am I right or wrong? Through the word, or are you talking about a human? A it's not about the human, it's about your revelation. Mm -hmm. How can you worship a God who's beyond creation, whom you never seen, you never heard, that can't enter into creation? How do you worship that unless you, you're worshiping so, uh, that through something that was revealed to even explain that? Well, I would say... I, 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 so, yeah, so, okay. so let me let me just establish a point. Do you believe God is beyond creation? God is outside of creation, yes. The only uncreated... Do you thing. believe God can step into creation? God cannot step into creation, okay. no. Do you believe God can reveal himself in creation? Yes, God does give scriptural revelation, 100%. Uh -huh. So you're worshiping God through that revelation? The difference is, I am. Is that, is that true or not? No, no, no. So, God, not only through revelation, but I believe we all can testify to this. We all know inside of ourselves that there's a created being there. So, it's not just revelation, but an innate well, sense you of our creation. You know being. everybody's heart. Right. Well, I know because even when I look out into the world, I can very clearly see evidence of intelligent design. And just the fact that every single human being, we try to seek purpose in life, purpose. This leads me to think, okay, who installed that purpose within me? So, there are many proofs that lead us to God, scriptural revelation, and also innate nature of man. Okay, good. So you're worshiping the God that you've never seen, never heard, through proofs. I'm not understanding, no, I'm not understanding the question. It's not a question, it's a statement. You, you said you've never seen God. He can't enter into creation, yes. correct? Correct. But somehow you know about this God through proofs mm -hmm. within creation. Proofs, yeah. So, which means that you're worshiping God through your proofs. This is very different to what the Christians say. So, oh, wait, uh, it, it, just just clear, make sure that I, that I'm on the right track yeah. with you. Is, is that what you're saying? To I, no, it's not about a man or anything. It's just, are you worshiping God directly? Because you don't know him, you haven't seen him, or are you worshiping through what was revealed or the proofs that you have about this God who's never stepped into creation? The proofs give me evidence of God, but I worship God directly. So, for example, one proof is I just look at the flower, the beauty of the flower, the way it's designed. I don't worship through the flower. I don't worship in the name of the flower as Christians worship in the name of Jesus. So these are two different order concepts that you're no, you, conflating. Okay, no, no, it's, it's not that it's the same concept. Oh, no, brother, 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 brother. Oscar, Oscar, I'm the one answering answering the question. That's fine. Brother, Oscar, 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 he's asking me. I'm the pastor, okay? Uh, uh, look, it's really good questions, right? But let's face it, man. Has God ever spoke to you? Not directly, no. Okay. How do you know the voice of God? I don't hear the voice of God because I'm not a prophet. How do, and there, you know, and, how do you know the voice of God? I don't know the direct sound of the voice of God because he's not ever spoken to me directly. So, so how do you even know that you are worshiping God? I know I'm worshiping the creator because, again, I can see that there's an intelligent mind behind this universe. And I submit myself to the creator alone. The creator who's spoken of all throughout the world and every tradition. Everybody knows that God exists. Everybody knows that there's one God and one creator. I simply submit myself to him, the uncreated being. So so you, you have a concept or a belief. You're placing your belief in the proofs that that proof means God. But God has never stepped into creation. You have never heard the voice of God. You're assuming based on what you see other people say they believe in God but they're all basing it on a revelation because God has never stepped into creation correct so so all that means brother listen all that means just using your logic is that there's something revealed about God an intermediate between the unseen and the seen there's something there that that gives you the ability to say yes there's a God and it's through that 
image, I, what might I say, or revelation that you can say there's a God. And, and, and that's why, brother, Christianity is the right way, because Jesus is that image of the invisible God. Jesus is that revelation, that word, that tangible reflection of the unseen. And this is why, brother, you need that in order to worship the unseen God. You need that revelation. We need that Jesus Christ, that word of God that was revealed, that thing about God that was revealed in creation. We need that to know that there's one true living God. So we might be saying it in a different way, um, but this is how we're saying it. And this is why the testimony of the Bible is true, because it reflects this truth. It confirms this truth. And the more I press you and ask you about these truths, it, you're saying the same thing. You just don't realize it yet.